and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes away a person from them, his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. In many ways, like Ezekiel was, you are watchmen over our territory, the land uh, we dwell in. The people selected you to watch out for our best interests. And I respectfully submit to you that your support of the casino proposed for Kings Mountain is not looking out for the best interests of the citizens of Kings Mountain and Cleveland County. In fact, in supporting this casino, you are doing nothing less, respectfully said, than welcoming with open arms the moral dross the casino will bring with it. Prostitution, illegal drugs, theft, the abuse and oppression of the poor, welcome with open arms. I implore you this afternoon, publicly withdraw your support for the casino, and rather as watchmen over your people, blow the trumpet sound of warning against it. I'll soon be emailing each one of you with an invitation to our next community awareness event, and I hope you will come observe the facts we present on why a casino would be a bad idea. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you, Pastor. <clears throat> I would like to uh, I'm going to change up the order just a little bit uh, for another one of our pastors, Pastor James Lodge. If you'd like to come forward, accept your name and address, please. I am Pastor James Lockridge, uh, Kings Mountain Second Baptist Church. I reside at 112 Cyclone Lane, Kings Mountain, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you tonight uh, against the casino. You've heard a lot of that the last several weeks. I've been here for most of those meetings, and uh, I just haven't seen the response. And that burdens me. It burdens me because of the need for us as leadership, be it secular or spiritual leadership in our community, to do what we need to do to protect and to, uh, to provide a guidance to our constituency. Uh, we need to tell them what's good and help them to see that. Uh, God's word speaks to the fact that in chapter 6 of the Gospel of John, people have been fed, a bunch of people, probably 16 to 20,000 people were fed by two fish and five loaves of bread that day. A miracle and Jesus then addresses the people and talks about it and they want more signs they wanted him to give them food to give them the economy that boost that we hear talked about a whole lot that's all they were interested in we want to go ahead and live the way we want to live and still be blessed it doesn't work that way and Jesus said in chapter 6 of John's gospel in verse 27 do not labor for the food which perishes but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give to you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Matthew said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and everything you have need of, that economic boost that we would all long for our community yeah. will be granted to us, because God's going to take care of his people. This coming weekend is Memorial Day. We honor our fallen, and in doing so, no doubt across our land, people will be seeing God bless America. I'm here to tell you tonight, God cannot and will not bless America, Cleveland County, or Kings Mountain, or my congregation, if we thumb our nose at his work. Right. So we need to do something different. We need to stand on this book. And I encourage you to do that. Thank you. Thank you. We have Cynthia Forcade. Hi, Cynthia Forcade. I reside at 1005 to Wendy Woods, the best location on the one. Thank you, commissioners, for your attention tonight. The Kings Mountain Awareness Group received a letter unsolicited from Rona Park, California, and I would like to read some excerpts. Having read about the proposed casino for Kings Mountain, I thought you might want to know about our experience here with the tribal casino that opened just six months ago. The impact for, from increased crime was immediate. The casino was immediately dubbed one of the busiest beats in the county by the sheriff, who 
also has said that the casino attracted a hardened criminal element. Since opening in 2000, November 2013, the casino has had over 300 arrests for serious offenses, ranging from larceny, assault, car theft, fraud, burglary, narcotics, and more. They've experienced a prostitution ring, a credit card fraud ring, numerous cars have been stolen from the casino parking lot, and there are car break-ins all the time. Prostitutes ply their trade on the dark rural roads which are lined with family homes. The casino has already wreaked havoc in one local Asian community, resulting in embezzling of funds used to gamble at the casino and financial ruin for several families. They advise the following. Do not buy the hype about more jobs and increased tourism. We got that spiel too. Casinos are designed to keep the customers inside gambling. The casino has not boosted tourism in our wine and country area. It has attracted primarily lower income people. They come to the casino, they gamble, and they go home. Please don't sell out your community for the promise of jobs. Nationally, it's been demonstrated in study after study that for every job a casino creates, the community loses 1.5 jobs. You will wind up in the red after a few short years. At the, this casino here, over 400 casino employees were laid off about a month after opening, and one restaurant in the casino has already closed due to lack of business. I hope you can benefit from our experience. And I hope you'll believe me when I tell you that you do not want this to happen in your community. It is a horror show. Signed, Marilyn Montgomery. Thank you. Thank you. Have Adam for Kate. Thank you, commissioners, for both their service and the opportunity to speak here tonight. We're going to talk about history this evening. Examine and consider carefully, history can tell us many things. For instance, history tells us that the Board of Commissioners, until recently, had an intense dislike of both legal and illegal video gambling machines. This is supported by multiple instances over the years of rezoning attempts by the legal gambling industry, denials by the commissioners, and by the many raids on the legal operations led by the Cleveland County Sheriff's Department. Let's look at the history of the Catawba tribe and gambling. They have been turned down on three different attempts to establish a casino in South Carolina when video gambling was legal there. It also tells us that both Mecklenburg and Gaston County officials recently declined to support a casino being placed in their area. History shows that the only success the tribe achieved in keeping the gambling hall open was the two-year time span when video gambling was legal in South Carolina. Shortly after video gambling was outlawed in South Carolina, the Catawba facility was unable to support itself with closed doors. Lastly, history tells us that the poor and uneducated in our area have a propensity to and tradition of losing massive amounts of money to video gambling operations, whether they be legal or not. This is evidenced by the many local raids that netted large amounts of cash. Upon examining these historical precedents, some questions arise. What part of this proposed casino plan changes the <coughs> Commission's opinion regarding video gambling from what it has been in the past? A video gambling machine is the same piece of equipment regardless of the environment it is situated in, and this casino will rely on them for 80 to 90 percent of its revenue. How does placing one inside a so-called gaming resort destination change whatever quality you have always been so adamantly opposed to? When and why did you change your stance on exposing a vulnerable population to the means of exhausting every resource they have through easy access to the crack cocaine and gambling? What new evidence or promised bonuses to the community have you received that would cause you to welcome an addition to our community that four other elected bodies have passed on? My last question is that given all of your collective experience, knowledge, and education, can you not do better for the community than to fall for a second grade smoke and mirror show after everyone else has passed on it? This community deserves and expects far more from you than to be a predator's last choice. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> 
You'll come forward and state your name and address, please. <coughs> My name is Buford Burke, and I live at 322 Marbury Square in Atlanta. I'm here tonight speaking for myself because some of the things I have to say to you may not be true for the awareness group, although I support everything that they're doing. They're thoughtful and kind in their remarks, and I believe you need to hear my voice, whether it's kind or not. I've watched you deal passionately with other county issues in the meeting for the last more than 40 minutes. I've also witnessed some of the commissioners get more than three minutes to cover their favorite piece of wants. My concern isn't because you feel strongly about those issues, but you appear blind to one that can be much more harmful to the county, and you fail to allow time to listen to the facts of objections. I've watched you show little or no emotion here to say some comments about the casino. I've neither seen nor heard of any action on your part to learn them. You've been offered information on the downside of casinos multiple times. Your unwillingness to see or hear that information is now to the point of second for me. Does being elected to public office mean you're inherently smarter than the rest of us? Does it mean you're better educated than the people you represent? Are you born with spatial insight? Do you gain knowledge through osmosis from some? Own source that we're not privileged to hear. Strangely enough, you need to study all sides of an issue before, before being able to fully understand the meaning of the problem and consequences to approve. Yet you signed a support letter for a casino after only reviewing a bias report supplied by the Chicago Indians. And so far, you seem unwilling to learn more than even when attempts to make to spoon feed the information to you. Your time to gracefully withdraw your support letter becomes shorter every day. As with all decisions, you can choose to hold the course, or you can change course to avoid the unbecoming storm. I remain hopeful that you can change the course. Once again, I ask you to put the casino on the agenda so information can be provided to you and discussed with you as a group. I want to remind you that any one, two, three, or all of you and we can send your support of the casino. I brought a suggested withdrawal letter to you that will allow you to withdraw your support gracefully and will land it in that clerk for you. Please choose the correct path and withdraw your support. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Burke. Commissioners, next item on agenda is the consent agenda, and for that I'll turn it over to our county manager. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, several items this evening under consent agenda for your consideration, uh, in addition to our regular uh, report from our tax assessor and minutes. I have several budget amendments, amendments that I will go through. Uh, item one are, is the minutes from the April 15th meeting that are, that are before you for your review and, and consideration this evening. Uh, item B, uh, tax administration, is the April tax collection report. Uh, I'm happy to report that uh, we're receiving uh, estimates that we have collected taxes year to date at 96.87%, and that is in line with the same collection level from a year ago. Uh, item C, also tax administration, is the tax abatements and supplements for the month of April, and we have abatements for the month of April in the amount of $52,677.95. We have supplements in the amount of $106,466.50 this evening. I have several budget, budget items, beginning with budget amendment number 59, and this is a budget amendment from the Sheriff's Office in the amount of $4,000 in federal forfeiture funds, and these funds would be used at, as is normally the case uh, for the removal of lettering, repainting, and uh, rebranding a vehicle uh, within the existing fleet. Item uh, budget amendment number 60 is a budget amendment in the health department, uh, allowing our department to accept $100 in donations that would be used to assist with payment for mammograms. 
Budget Amendment Number 61 is a budget amendment also within the Health Department to allow us to budget $18,426 in state performance-based food and lodging funds that would be used for environmental health operating expenses. Budget, number, budget Amendment Number 62 is also a budget amendment in the Health Department that would allow us to budget $11,276 in DHHS family planning is federal grant funds that will allow us to purchase birth control supplies and long acting contraceptive devices. And finally, budget amendment number 63 this evening, also a budget amendment in our health department, will allow us to budget $405 received from Charlotte Area Health Education Center, AHAC, and that will allow us to purchase lab supplies, lab supplies for preset students. That concludes the consent agenda, including our budget amendment. Mr. Chair, I'll turn it back to you. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions on the consent agenda? Please approve the agenda. Got a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Second. Third. All those in any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Commissioner, the next uh, section of our meeting is a special recognition. First item we've got on this is uh, Emergency Medical Services Week, May 18th to 24th, 2014. And we'll ask uh, Joe Lord. Joe, if you come forward, EMS Director, and I think you have a presentation for us. I'm going to try to make it short, yes, sir. Okay. Take your time. Chair, while uh, Mr. Lord tees this up tonight for the public and for the uh, commissioners, I had the privilege this morning of attending uh, an event over at the hospital with Joe and with a number of his staff and with some of our partner agencies in our community. A uh, very moving tribute to our first responders in our community, and it's certainly a privilege to be there. I, I, I know that uh, you folks always try to participate in these special events and I appreciate your, your uh, opportunity to be there. And I asked Joe tonight to share some of the information that was provided this morning. Joe, you know, I certainly appreciate you doing that. Good evening, everyone. This is National EMS Week. It's 40th year for EMS. And basically this year it's dedicated for life. Most of the people that work in Cleveland County are volunteer rescue, volunteer fire department, some paid fire departments, a lot of your public safety police officers, and then of course Cleveland County EMS and the rescue squad. Some are paid, some are volunteer. What we're going to go through tonight is a couple of incidences that actually show some differences of the people here in the community. The first one was the same. For 2013, for those of you that are uh, new to this program, it's a very tough program to get through. What that means is that somebody was brought back um, to life and is out in the community today just like they were before the incident occurred. That's a very tough scenario when we look at a cardiac OS. Sometimes we don't return them back to a normal life. The one that we spearheaded this year um, happened to be a retired, uh, retired battalion chief, Chief Snark from Shelby Fire Department. He had a cardiac arrest in the September of 2013, right out in front of the hospital. He was just being done for an elective surgery. He came back out and at the point in time he went in the driver's seat and his wife looked over at him and said, we're going to go to lunch. And he no longer responded. So that is one of the stories that we have. Um, and we have started a new program here in the community. It's called Team CPR, which means you're going to see a lot more vehicles when we have somebody that's actually in cardiac arrest that focus on doing good CPR on the scene and we're staying longer. We are saving more people out there with our Team CPR than we were in the past. It's a science as far as medicine is concerned, but we also are learning as we go along. The other story I'm going to bring to you today is about a four-year-old. This four-year-old, I can go through the story here. That's a picture of their home that used to be there on Morgan Street. It's no longer there. This house was involved in a fire that could have easily been a potato. That November 20th, 2013, it's about 41 degrees outside. 
approximately 9 p.m., a fire starts in the home on North Morgan. First calls come into our communication center. Those of you that understand our 911 telecommunicators are very liable for all of our public safety. Here in the city of Shelby, two different 911 systems are actually engaged in something like a fire, and especially when you listen to it, uh, we've got police, fire, EMS, and rescue all going to the same scene. And we've got two different dispatch units that are working to orchestrate everybody getting there. 21 seconds after they got the first call, um, they dispatched the Shelby City Fire Department and then the Cleveland County EMS and Shelby Rescue. We've got a little bit We'll go ahead and start to listen to the dispatch itself. inside of the building. It's different than a residential uh, home that's on fire and there's nobody in there. This brings a huge heightening of awareness going on. We're sending lots of resources to this facility. And at the same time, somebody's got to go in. Somebody's got to go as fast as they can through that house and find a two-year-old, as was described here, who's actually four, a four-year-old child. Fire departments trained for this almost monthly on this type of scenario. The number of times that it happens are very, very small. So there's a lot of training time that is spent with these departments on making sure they do a good thorough search and making sure they understand what they're doing. You're going to hear some muffled voices next. When they're muffled, they are completely encapsulated. They're in a tough turnout gear, a big mask on them, and a big tank of air on the back of them, and they're going into the burning building, not with a hose. These are the guys that are going in to do the search. It's usually pitch black. You'll hear that there's a lot of smoke involved. And you'll hear them keep muffling back and forth to each other. And they'll use some different terms and stuff of how they pretty much are trying to pinpoint where this child is in this home. Because the family is outside, but they're missing a four year old. City of Shelby arrives at 907 and advises that there were smoke and flames visible. You pretty much heard that. Fire department arrives at 909, just three minutes after it's been dispatched. <coughs>
we're going to be here with the mayor in a couple of minutes when you're talking all the public safety that's going on. They're in the short synopsis of who was all there or who was involved in this. This is just one call happening, and I can guarantee you there are other calls going on in the county at the same time. We've got Shelby PD, which are there. Um, both, they helped us get information before the fire trucks even got there on where this child might be located. They're talking with the family, trying to work it out the best they can to figure out which corner of the house that child's in. The city of Shelby, because it's the city of Shelby, got the first 911 call from this. They're the first not a one communication center, got it. They hand off some of the communications to the county's dispatch center, which dispatches the rescue squads and the fire department um, to the scene. Then you've got Shelby Fire Department that was involved, Shelby Rescue, Cleveland County EMS, and then all of the first receivers at Cleveland Regional. As you heard on the radio, my telecommunicators are covering us all the way around. They already know that there's a child in that house. They've already contacted the hospital. The hospital is already ready by the time the paramedic says, we're out to the hospital, did you catch it? He said, they're already aware and they're waiting for you. So that's all part of our prep system to make sure that everybody's doing the right thing at the right time and making sure that our physicians, nursing, and all their support staff, everybody's on cue that we've got a critical patient coming in. This kind of shows you, even though it is EMS week, it takes a team from our community <clears throat> to build this type of relationship where everybody's right on key and everybody knows what's going on. Communication Center, we got Kelly Sturgis, Mandy Mullinax, Tommy Parsley, and then Sharon, who was on the radio that day. I think you heard her voice. Fire Department Rescue Team, the first one up there on the left, that's Eric. Right? Most firefighters, hope they never have to run this call. Um, Eric in the left up right hand corner is the guy that actually found the child. Right? He's the one that came running out of the building with him. We got Captain Dan Van Boy on the right. He's the captain of that ship. And then we've got Jason Beck, one of the engineers there. The rest of the fire department, there was 21 people just from the fire department there that helped in all instruments because it all has to be done to make sure that they get out all safe. So we've got to try to put the fire out. We've got to try to find the child. We've got to make sure we're matching everybody up so that everybody knows what's going on. EMS and Rescue. Carl was the one paramedic you heard on there. We've got another paramedic that was there, Kelly. We've got um, another paramedic, Jennifer Parker. 
she was there also. And then um, we had one girl from Shelby who doesn't catch up with her name anymore. Um, Jennifer Smith. And then another one was on the crash charts with Shelby. His name is Sal Dean. All of those people will recognize this week. They get a little certificate of time, and we appreciate what they did and all the efforts that they put together. Again, it's a lot of training that everybody does. It's not every day we have one of these incidences, but when they go, we like to have a little good. And this one was a good one. Dr. Kish was in the emergency room. She was the physician. And then we have um, Katie Mooney, Christy Lassier, and Casey Weinhardt. There was quite a few others. Well, not only did we honor our people, we also brought these people back in. This is the little child, like I say. He came to our breakfast, ate breakfast with us. His grandma was very nice and kind with us and spoke highly of us. This little child wouldn't be here today if we didn't have the services and the money and the support that we need. Yes, it's budget time, but it's also new messages. And we need to go back and review what we've been doing and make sure we know how to do it better. These are the two teams. One of them on the right is the cardiac arrest. Uh, the gentleman is in the white shirt, um, Battalion Chief Snyder. And that was his wife, Millie. Most of you may know Millie if you were here. Millie Snyder actually worked in the Sheriff's Department. Both of them put in over 30 years of peace and public safety. So it was great to return back to the battalion chief and save his life that day. The one on the left, you got the little guy there with Eric, and those are all the fire department people that were there. All I want to do is just kind of bring this presentation. We do this for our EMS folks and stuff just to kind of honor them and what they can do. And I do appreciate your time and letting us show that. Anytime that you can save a life, it's good. In 
anytime you say about life, a return to normal emotion without any problem, then it makes it that much greater than the new success they've had. And I would like to say thank you. I'm glad you're on the team for the I'm getting a little age on me and I'm going to need Joe, I, all I can say is that um, I know that EMS fire departments are a vital part of Cleveland County, but I think that if I can say something that, that I know is true, is that across the state of North Carolina, Joe Lord, what we do here in Cleveland County, has been told to me that we're top notch. We're the best. And uh, if you can convey that to all all the EMS and all, and all the fire departments and police department and all. Uh, I think Cleveland County is uh, blessed by having uh, such good people who go out and actually spend not only for the paid ones but for the volunteers who spend so much time in training. And training's not easy anymore. And, and one of the biggest problems that we have right now is that Younger people are not really interested in going through all that training, so it's Joe's problem to convince them that that's what they need to do and, and for us to grow as a county. And I don't think that I would ever see the day that we would fail leadership like Joe's in making Cleveland County great and what we do for Mercy Service. Joe, I want to thank you guys for the dedication, and you do have a great team. Um, it makes me very proud to have you guys as the support of our community. Uh, back in the, the winter when it snowed, and, and we went over there, and it was just the, everyone there was dedicated to be there for the duration. But if there was any emergency, and they had contingency plans, and were ready to go to support our community and take care of us, and I appreciate that very much. Thank you for all you do. Joe, thank you very much. And having been a person who has been exposed to fire when I was nine years old, uh, five years older than this little, little fella here, I stood in our front yard and watched us lose everything we had except what we had on our backs. And uh, to see the enormous amount of progress made in communication since the late 40s and, and to where it is today, Needless to say, we still would have probably lost everything, but uh, my grandfather about lost his life fighting that fire because he was a volunteer fireman and he lived close to us. Uh, but the, the teamwork which you guys display, the re rapid response is just, it's breathtaking. And uh, I just, I can't say enough. Thank you so much. Joe, I'd like to say this. this um, you know, in thinking about the different parts that we have in emergency management in Cleveland County, um, I'm so appreciative that this week and, and recognizing our emergency management uh, personnel and, and our rescue people. You know, think about it, the, the fire department, and they're they're out there in the front, they're, they're one of the first ones there normally, and they're one of the last ones to leave. And a lot of times, family members get to talk to those people and, and, and you know, they console them and, and they're really well visible in the, in the community. Um, Sheriff's Department, our law enforcement, the same way. These guys get in quick, um, they get there quick, and they take care of business, and then they leave quick too, because they've got to, they, their job's not done when they leave the scene. Um, so, you know, in the community, just remember that these are, these are our heroes. Uh, they, don't, they don't always get the recognition you deserve, and uh, we so appreciate what you do. Do a great job. <clears throat>
next item on the agenda is a resolution honoring the life of uh, Keith Crisco uh, and Cleveland County, the Cleveland County as well. And I'd like to turn it over to um, Commissioner Hawkins. Uh, as you can see, one of the class and jewelry and great things that communities get to do is honor those individuals who appeal to Cleveland County. Um, some of them may be paid, some of them may be volunteers, but they go out and they do it because they want to do it and they want to serve the citizens of Cleveland County. Um, but um, one that we want to recognize tonight, and I know all the commissioners are familiar with the individual, and I have asked um, um, for uh, Christian to come and to make some comments if she would. I see Nikki here. Nikki, I don't know whether you or Steve want to work the most with Chris and keep keep Chris going. But uh, again, this is one of the most important times that we have as county commissioners to recognize those individuals who have given to Cleveland County and to Cleveland County citizens. Keith Crisco, if you do not know him, uh, died uh, a couple weeks ago. And he was the Secretary of Commerce under Governor Perdue. Is that right? But I think that he, he believed that, and I, I honestly believe that in his mind, he believed he was from Cleveland County. He spent so much time trying to do what he thought was right to bring an industry to Cleveland County. And we thought it would be important tonight that we honor his life and that we make some comments about him and that we send a resolution to his family thanking him not only because he was just the Secretary of Commerce, because he actually presented himself as part of our Cleveland County. He really worked hard to make things happen here, and that's why I'm hoping that Christian can come up and say, tell about all the projects that, that he was with, and Christian, if you could do that, and just speak to, to the audience about the projects you worked with on the key, and then uh, I'll ask the clerk to sure read the resolution, and then, um, I think I asked David, I don't know if it's not going to talk about it, but from the economic development side of it, the, the, the office has kind of do a little cover letter uh, to go along with the resolution and just let them know if this is not something that's important to us about what it is. Just Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be here this evening and to speak about Keith. I'm going to try to do it without crying. I'm already starting.
it was it was during the summertime and um, I didn't have my normal support team to be able to travel to Charlotte with me to meet with these um, uh, this, this international delegation. Um, they had about 15 or so people flying over from Germany. And when Keith found out that I was going to be the only person there and that we didn't have our team in place, he was on the eastern side of the state of North Carolina and he drove clear across the state, got up at 4 a.m. that morning to be there for me and to be there for us as we met with this company. And that was the kind of individual that he was. Um, you know, it, this was, um, his passing was sudden and shocking to us, but it's a great um, reminder to all of us of how precious life is. And we just are so fortunate that we had the opportunity to work with him. I can count on a few fingers and name a few people that have been impactful to me and who have really um, been professional mentors to me in my life, and I consider them one of those people. And uh, again, I'm just appreciative of the opportunity for me to be here today. So thank you. Thank you for giving me this deserving recognition. <laughs> started trying to change and accelerate some things that we were doing in economic development. Uh, I had his cell phone that was given to me by somebody else and I called him. And we'd already met at that time and he said, what are you doing calling me on Saturday? It was a Saturday morning and we were meeting up here with David Deere in the office about a project on Saturday morning and I'd just gone through kidney, kidney stone surgery so you know how I was feeling. Uh, but long story short, he said, man, you really bothered me, but uh, this is Saturday. He said, you know what I'm doing? I, I said, I have no idea. He said, I'm out here at the farm with my Mary Tilly. I'm right in the middle of Mary Tilly, my, my farm. The second thing I want to mention is it wasn't unusual for us to get a call from him from Germany, England, wherever. If we were involved in a project and we were seeking guidance, I mean, you could call him and it might get a different square he was. He was that responsive to you. And the third example I, I want to give you is um, this dates back to when three of us were <coughs> making the trip to Indianapolis, Indiana on uh, regarding the American Legion World Series. And that trip was on a Saturday, Sunday. And I get a call from him on Friday. And he says, Eddie, I'm in England. He said, this is a big deal for me and a big deal for the state. He says, I'm sending the secretary, I'm sending the, the, develop, the director of travel and tourism to the state to meet you in Indianapolis and she will represent the state. That's just the kind of guy he was. And we, he had this famous saying, which we in Cleveland County love, because we really tried to work together as a team and in different parts of the state, uh, People, he'd get up to make a, a talk or something and he, he would say so often, if you people want to get it right and want to see what teamwork results in, go to Cleveland County. Um, and it, you know, it makes you feel good. But as you will see later on in the budget, his life, 
his life will have trickle down effects on the citizens of this county in very measurable terms, as you, as you will see it when the budget is presented. So I can talk on and on, uh, but the, sh the suddenness of his death was shocking. And I want to thank Commissioner Hawkins for uh, doing this presentation and making it possible. And I'm sure his family will really appreciate it. Thank you, Ron. And Kay, if you don't mind, if you could read the resolution and then after that, we could probably uh, go on down with Christian and just like you're sharing a picture and uh, maybe um, uh, and talk to the other chief. I know they dealt, and you dealt with the chief more than we did in the use of the economic development. And his death was fairly sudden. I'm not that sure if he was out working or running or I'm not that sure what it was, but I just know that it was, it was, it was a great loss not only to Cleveland uh, County and North Carolina, but it, it kind of bears me to just okay, uh, I'm going to call someone. Well, James Moss, could you spend mine? James, you probably, yeah, I know you didn't know Keith, but you still don't have a pair of this and about Keith's life. share that our 
family of humans might be increased, might be embellished in some way, might be improved. And we thank you for the, not only Mr. Crisco, Father, but for those that supported him, family, friends, co-workers, and for the legacy that he leaves, may it be that which would be emulated as all of us reach out to touch our fellow man. In your word, you tell us that the greatest of all commandments is to love you with all of our soul, our mind, our hearts, our bodies, our strength. But then the second commandment, we're told, is like unto the first, that we would love our neighbor as ourselves. Evidently, Mr. Crisco did just that. And we are grateful. May we do likewise. Commissioners, you have, you have heard the resolution read. Uh, we do need to vote on that. I'll ask for a motion. So a motion and a second. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Yes, we'd like to go forward and who would go out front? Or go we'd go out front and give this description. We're going to have this sent to his um, wife. Commissioners, now we're going to go to the regular agenda. First item on the regular agenda is uh, number, seven, number seven, fire district tax rate. And for that, I will turn it over to County Manager, Jeff Richardson. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair, thank you very much. Uh, county staff became aware back in April, earlier this year, through our routine uh, reach out to our district, uh, that our number seven fire district, lab or, uh, through its board of directors, uh, had taken a formal action and had voted uh, for a tax rate increase for their fire district uh, to be effective July the 1st, uh, moving that tax rate from four cents to five cents, respectfully. Uh, I know that Mr. Davis, Mr. Cook is here tonight from the county's emergency management department, and they certainly can answer any technical questions that you may have regarding any of our fire districts. Uh, but we did receive this back in April. Uh, from the um, Secretary of the Board, and they have taken formal action, and that is for your consideration this evening. Thank you. Commissioners, are there any questions for our county manager or for staff? I have a question. We'll make the call. Just, just knowing when it's below the five cent tax fire district, <clears throat> and when these five districts are set up, it gave leeway, I guess, to the Board of Directors filing to canvas and tell me to recommend the tax rate for their district only. It's not a county wide. It's only for that district. So uh, unless we have a proposal, I'll make the motion that we go ahead and, and approve the request that their board is directing it. A second. And a motion and a second. Any other discussion? 
All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Any opposed? My motion passes. Next item on the agenda is the health park building update, and uh, we will turn it over to County Manager and to Roger Holland, the architect. So, Roger, Mike, Robert, would you like to come forward? circumstances tonight uh, here with really good news concerning the um, new health department. Uh, as you're aware, we've been working on this for quite a while and uh, received bids several weeks ago uh, and very, very pleased with the outcome of the bid. I have to say after hearing uh, the previous reports, I heard Joe referring about the importance of the team, how this work couldn't have been done without the team. I heard Eddie, uh, uh, Mr. Holbrook, referring to the importance of the, the teamwork that uh, Keith Frisco uh, uh, gave and how he touted that teamwork. This project is no different. It could not have been done without uh, the team that was in place. And the majority of that team, uh, I don't know why they're on the back row, but uh, they're, they're sitting back there uh, under uh, the county manager's direction. Uh, they were involved in this project from the very beginning and uh, added so much to make this building a much better facility uh, than it could have been and um, uh, made the project much better. So um, just like the other uh, discussions, this would not have been, in my opinion, successful without the team that was put together and the majority of that team are the county employees that are sitting back there who offer their support and advice. Um, if we could go to the site plan, what I'd like to do is give you just a <coughs> um, uh, overview of, of where we are and um, what has transpired. Um, the, this is a uh, simplified version of the site plan uh, for the, the new health department. As you can see with the county offices and DSS, uh, this, the addition of the health department here does create truly a, a, a highly integrated human services uh, campus. And this project brings all those components together uh, in, into that, um, that campus. Uh, you may notice that the, the top there, the entrance between food line and the uh, admin building, that area, as you are probably aware, has been a real headache for many years with traffic trying to get in and out of the county property, competing with traffic trying to get in and out of food line. I went back and checked. We started our negotiations with the food line property managers on May 17th of last year, and we came to final agreement just very recently what the property owners, the property management company, what Food Line would agree to, to let us work together with them and join, uh, combine the property to make a good, safe entrance and exit on that northern part of the, uh, of the property. Um, this uh, is gonna make a much safer entrance for all the people who use these facilities. Uh, the, um, Second, or the, the primary interest, however, is down at the bottom of the screen, uh, right above Shelby Intermediate School. Clinton County Schools were very gracious working with us to let us close one of their direct entrances. Uh, we worked closely with them to make sure that they were satisfied with the arrangement we have. So now we have a, a truly a, a main entrance to the uh, DSS and Health Department campus uh, in that central location. Uh, part of that was to close the multiple entrances off the Post Road that have been a, a constant source of headache for uh, DOT and for anybody trying to get in and out of that, uh, um, that area. So it, it weakens that area quite a bit in terms of traffic flow, uh, makes a much better access in and out of that site. Um, one thing that I thought was very, very interesting is during our conversations with the Food Line uh, Property Management Company, they had to go back to the property owners who 
then they have to go back to the food line, corporate who their lease is with. Throughout all this, a decision was made by the owners to spend several hundred thousand dollars doing a complete upgrade of the facade of this building at the cost of the new health plan. They would not have done anything, but I think they realized the improvement to this property, how it's going to affect their property. So they're investing in Cleveland County um, because of what is being done on the new health department uh, site. Um, during this process, we had some challenges. Uh, one, that um, once the soil borings were done, discovered some unusual soil conditions here that in my 30, I guess plus 35 years now, we have not run into, or at least we didn't have technology to uh, discover until uh, recently. We had to go through a series of, of uh, explorations of how we're going to deal with the soil conditions on the site. And um, we were able to get that incorporated into the, um, the bid package. Um, and that was really the, the only hiccup we, we had in the process. Um, before we move to the, the actual numbers of the bid, um, I, I think it's important again to stress the importance of the folks uh, sitting in this room that, that helped us. Um, as we got started, as I said, uh, Jeff wanted to make sure they were involved in the process. And we could not have asked for anyone, any group of people, to be any better to guide us and direct us as they were in all aspects of this project, whether it was uh, telephone, uh, IT, um, uh, building maintenance, um, uh, um, mechanical systems, electrical. Uh, they gave us their side of what they deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, and we were able to incorporate them that into this building. So uh, our, our hats are definitely off to them, uh, and certainly makes me appreciate the resources we have uh, at Cleveland County. Uh, obviously, I'm one of the most important uh, partners in this process uh, were the folks at the health department. Dorothea and her staff, Rodella, um, spent tireless hours with us, especially Greg. Uh, I think uh, Greg is on Rodella's speed dial uh, on the phone. Uh, they, they became real good friends. Uh, spent many hours with them making sure that the final layout of this health department served the needs that they had and that uh, it would do what they knew needed to be done. And it wasn't just them, they involved their department heads, they involved uh, all the people in the department to make sure that the final product would meet the needs of the health department. So um, um, we had a great team. Um, and I guess if we go to the actual bid uh, recommendations, um, this is a, a synopsis of the bids. Um, the Construction Company was the low bidder out of the Chairville, North Carolina, which um, I believe we have one of the owners of Bean Construction with us tonight, Robert Brown. I uh, appreciate him being here. They've got a lot of employees who live in Cleveland County, don't you, Robert? Uh, a lot of Cleveland County employees. When, when we see Bean Construction, to us, that's a local construction company. We have bidders from all over the state and from uh, all around, and we were very, very fortunate that, that they was low. Uh, we had several, the, the prices were so much better than we expected that we were able, actually able to come back and uh, add a few things that are on this list that, um, that really enhanced it even more. Some things on this list were more just to identify particular costs, like the, the data telephone ID and the, the road work uh, and some things like that. But we were able to, to get, again, a few nicer finishes that we did not expect to get uh, based on what some of the alternates we had in the bid package. Um, the total amount of the project comes to 17,947,312. Let me put that in perspective a little bit. 
if you figure that on a square foot basis, that comes down to a little bit less than $149 per square foot. Uh, that's incredible. Uh, you know, we're not going to some of the things that are included in this, where we would expect uh, uh, any kind of medical facility to be $165 square foot, we would have thought would have been a good price. This is about $148.37 square foot. It includes almost half a million dollars in soil remedi remediation work. That is the cost of the bad dirt. To re that's not bad dirt, but to repair the soil like it needs to be about a half million dollars. This includes all the road work at the front, doing the, the entrance at the food line, the entrance at the school. That was $444,000. So included in that $148 and odd change per square foot are those items, which um, when, when we see that, it just, uh, we could not be happy I have to be careful talking or Robert's going to want to increase the price. <laughs> um, but <laughs> he's right, he's too late now. I've already told the, the county manager that he does not understand the meaning of change orders, Robert. <laughs> uh, so, all in all, and, and the, you know, I almost feel like, feel like I'm, I'm selling a Henson knife or something on TV because of all the good stuff in here, but this does have, uh, the, the sustainability of this building is important too. This building could have been a being certified building if we wanted to go the route and have it certified. It's got very high efficiency uh, HVAC units. It's got um, a, a very high quality roof. As, as Jeff and I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, we could have gone with another roof and saved some money we probably would have been gone when the warranty would expire on that road, but instead we've got a roof that's going to save the county money uh, down the road. Dwight Scott, we got the high roof. Yeah, okay. um, there's other things in here. It's got good materials. It's got uh, wise decisions in terms of making sure we've got good equipment, the right kind of purchase a generator, uh, all the things that are going to uh, pay benefits down the road for the county, not at the expense of trying to save a few dollars on the money. And in spite of all that, we ended up with a, a very good price. So um, with that, it's, uh, uh, we're glad to answer any questions. As I mentioned, Greg Melton from our office is here and knows a whole lot more about building than I do. Um, and we've got all the, the folks from the county who I know can answer specific questions. I'm glad to answer any questions you might have. Christian, any questions? It'll be finished by the end of the year. I just didn't say which year. But yeah. <laughs> The way the arrangement is, we really did not change the entrance or anything on ESS. It's going to keep the same entrance uh, the way it worked out. At one time, there was a discussion maybe having to change the entrance to ESS. None of that had to be, been, had to be done when we were able to get that, um, that south entrance in. We were able to go in that direction and maintain their operations exactly like it is. So uh, they're really not, uh, not expense. Uh, uh, no expense on the BSS side other than uh, in completing a uh, conduit for future fiber connections between the two buildings. Connection between BSS and the golf club will be there so it's easy access for those using those facilities. Absolutely, and that's, that's sort of the beauty of this is that uh, when once you're on there, all the parking is really between the two buildings. So it's going to feel like a campus. When you go there, you'll be able to go to either, either facility very easily. I think the beauty of it, like you said, even with the DSS being the older building, with the 
public features in it and understanding that you could share, like, you know, the cost between the claims facilities would be upgraded, that, you know, there's no need to have two large ones in, the, in two different buildings. This would give the, the other one some facilities and maybe they don't have enough room to do it. And two, with serving your customers, it's a lack of words, you know, between the two, you've got to overlap some, you know, goes to both places. They were actually the general contractor on the roof of this. Not that there are a 
Chair, if I may, there's no more discussion. I would like to make a motion. And it says here, let me find it again, a, a motion to award the contract to be constructed for
uh, that we have about a $200,000 reduction in local social, social services match to our social services programs, uh, led by Perry Ellis and her team. And, and, and that is coming off of your last year where I believe it was about $450,000 of additional local funding. So that swing was significant as we went through our final budget uh, uh, revenue estimates. And so we, we started with new revenue in the neighborhood of approximately $3 million. The gap, and going to the bottom part of the page, is just, a, is just a, an overview of where that money is recommended to be placed in next year's budget. Employer health care cost increases. I alerted you back in January that we were, we were grappling with a medical inflation rate that's around uh, 8%, which equated to a half million dollars. Uh, with medical inflation, along with high claims over the past year, I'm recommending an 18% increase with our employer health care uh, self-funded uh, program for next year. That equates to approximately 900000 I'll be talking a little bit later this evening about a strategy through a multi-department team effort that we put together where we're going to roll out a more aggressive level of wellness initiatives in the coming year with your support. We're excited about the opportunity to manage uh, our wellness initiatives, and I'll talk a little bit more in detail about that. The board gave me uh, guidance and is mentioned in your strategic goals that you want to lessen our year-to-year -year reliance on our fund balance as a balancing strategy. Uh, last year and last year's budget, uh, staff relied on fund balance for approximately a $2.1 million one-time withdrawal in order to balance the budget. I'm pleased to report that this year that will back off to $1.8 million. $300,000 reduction there that you see. I'll mention this in a few moments, but that's a, that is a, a $300,000 that will go to the fund balance, and it will go toward your long-term goal of increasing your fund balance or toward the neighborhood of the 18 to 20% threshold. I have, uh, for your consideration, an employee cost of living increase, $750,000, which equates to a 2% uh, cost of living adjustment for employees across the organization. We have a dedicated uh, increase of $215,000 to our uh, community college for our workforce development initiative. I'll talk a little bit more about that later this evening. And then overall, we saw operational staffing uh, increases, a lot of which were directed back to the commissioner's strategic goals of uh, about $900,000. And so that's the $3 million of revenue and approximately $3 million in expenses. Now let's tilt the layer back and go a little further into where these uh, increases will go next year if, if approved by the board. If the board will recall, back uh, into last year, you, you went away and you spent time, dedicated time, thinking about your large uh, uh, community priorities, your goal setting. You did that several times before I came on board last September. And then you went away in January and you said, let's take a look at our focus areas, our goals, and let's do a prioritization of what's most important. Where can we make the biggest impact to improve the quality of life in Cleveland County? I've got four top priorities this evening that are tied directly back to budgetary funding that I'm recommending for next year. Your, four of your top priorities that I'll cover this evening in, in uh, the order that they are in your strategic plan, number one, you place a high emphasis on completing phase one of the county state wildlife commission partnership for the uh, public shooting range. And for next year's budget, uh, you already secured the state funding necessary to complete phase one of the range. Operationally, we're, we're scheduled to bring the range on, on, uh, online around July of 2015. And we have uh, scheduled half year salary, an allocation of $30,000, or a full-time position, we're calling that a gun range manager, to be hired somewhere around mid-budget year so that we will have about a six to seven month head start to get operationally uh, underway and be prepared to open to the general public uh, July of next year. Top priority number two, and uh, Mr. Hall did a great job this evening of, of laying out uh, the, the campus uh, traffic design, uh, but the integrated human service campus we got $444,000 that was earmarked out of that $17.9 million bid that will go to enhancing the public's ability to be able to access services at the Post Road site 
where the social services is and where our health department will be soon. And those campus entry and safety, uh, traffic safety improvements are step one of looking at a more highly integrated human service campus so that our uh, citizens in Cleveland County who are coming and asking for assistance, public assistance, are able to access more freely the services that they need. Our third top priority, and it's reflected in next year's budget, uh, the commissioner has asked for a model animal control program. Uh, Sam Lockridge, the health department, the staff there have worked very hard. They've brought a rescue coordinator on board uh, mid-budget year. Going into the next year, we scheduled for the uh, full cost for that position now for the full year, as well as two additional positions uh, and facility upgrades to our existing animal shelter, where our animal shelter uh, with these upgrades will be more responsive to the community and present a, a more favorable front to the community if they come in in consideration and take in consideration of those options. If we and the final top priority, we've had five that you that you mentioned in January. Uh, the fifth one is a, a higher level of, of focus on retail growth in our community. And I would mention for our audience that the commission is having a forward with the task force uh, who is identifying in the process of identifying the scope of work and action plan, but no funding has been allocated for that this time. Now, uh, our, our final top priority uh, is our 2016 revaluation planning. Uh, and it has to do with the Board of Commissioners asking the staff to be mindful that we will, we will reach a mandatory eight year revaluation of all property in Cleveland County in 2016. The commissioners have clearly set a goal that they would like to see continued strategic growth of our tax base. And this was well on the way before I got here. As you can see by the uh, data that was provided tonight, we've got economic, an economic incentive program. Uh, you honored Mr. Crisco earlier this evening in the fitting that I talked about this tonight because many of these projects have his fingerprints on them, along with Kristen Fletcher, who's uh, provided tremendous leadership with our economic development partnership. We have 29 current projects. We have four incentive agreements that will be fully satisfied in 2014. These are small, smaller projects. But with Mr. Green's assistance and Sherry Deer out of the finance department, we did some analysis. And we looked at the top, the five largest companies uh, who have invested in Cleveland County. And with our 2013 taxes now collected, uh, Mr. Green has uh, done some analysis that suggests that the net investment of these five companies equate to 3.5 cents on the 57 cent tax rate. Another way of saying that, Commissioner, is that as you, as you have looked years ago at strategizing on how you can strategically grow your tax base in Cleveland County, and if you can bring industry and provide jobs through a vibrant economic incentive program, without these five companies, then you can see that these companies are between year two in year three of their existence in this county. Most of those incentive agreements are, are 10 years, one at 14 and one at five. But the net growth for Cleveland County after the incentive payments are satisfied is three and a half cents. Without these five industries, you would have either had to raise taxes or cut services during that same time frame. This was a sustaining feature uh, for your tax base growth uh, over the last five year period. And it's helped to sustain this community during a pretty significant economic downturn. Now let's go one step further and let's look at your focus areas, your four focus areas that you identified in your goal setting retreat. And I'm going to talk a little bit more in detail about some things that are in your budget for consideration next year. I'll remind the board and the general public that your four focus areas are economic development, which I just spoke about, public safety, community education, which includes customer service outreach, and finally, fiscal sustainability, which really goes hand in glove with that economic development piece. As we grow our tax base, as we attract jobs, as we diversify our job base, our unemployment levels go down, and we become more fiscal sustainable as a community during uh, future economic downturns. Several things that I'd like to point out this evening, I mentioned, early, mentioned earlier, with our economic development partnership and our continued growth, most recently, April figures show that our unemployment is at 6.9%. To go to that next level of, of employment, we've got to work even harder on workforce development. And I'm recommending to the board that we increase operational funding at the Cleveland Community College by 13% in the coming year, which equates
place for two hundred thirteen thousand dollars. And I would ask that the community college consider continue to invest in four workforce development to continue the phenomenal relationship we've got with our uh, success with the with attracting new industry to our community. I'm al I'd also like to mention that one of the commission's goals is to manage our occupancy tax revenue and to continue to create synergistic, synergistic partnerships that are occurring here before Cleveland County. As part of that, I would recommend that we increase the Cleveland uh, Chamber Tourism, Tourism and Development funding up to $120,000 for next year, which is an approximate 10% increase over what they currently receive. In the focus area of public safety, which is a key focus area for our community, we want to keep our community safe, and Mr. Moore did a phenomenal job earlier this evening of reminding us all of what the, the relationships with all of our community partners mean to us uh, during that an emergency event. Several things that I bring to your attention. In the area of public property and safety uh, upgrades, first of all, at our law enforcement center, our sheriff's office uh, has been very patient with us working to try to identify funding for exterior safety upgrades in the amount of just over $60,000. These upgrades would help to ensure that as prisoners are transported from the jail annex over the court, back and forth, that we're safely able to move these uh, prisoners in and out of, of our court uh, without any type of uh, incident. In addition to that, we've got 19,000 additional dollars in funding that I would like for you to consider for both our Kings Mountain and our Boyle Springs uh, trail system. Uh, I believe the Broadway Greenway that's over on the Boyle Springs side, uh, they would uh, like an additional amount of money to use for uh, added security so that when our citizens visit the Broadway Greenway that they do feel safe and secure, as well as the Kings Mountain uh, uh, trail that's over on the Kings Mountain side, they've asked for an increase that would also go to security. We also have several positions loaded in the budget for your consideration next year that I would couch uh, as certainly public safety, but also an additional level of customer service. First in our sheriff's department and our patrol unit, uh, I'm recommending that we uh, increase our deputy uh, full-time staff by four positions, which will allow the sheriff to uh, position these people for uh, necessary response and service calls as, as, uh, uh, throughout the shifts as well as three uh, additional income maintenance case workers over our social, social services department. And I'd like to take a second to, to recognize Terry and her staff as they work through this, uh, this very tricky and demanding implementation <coughs> of the, uh, the new NCFAST uh, food stamp system. It's been very demanding, it's been very taxing across the state. Uh, the Association of County Commissioners has had several conference calls with county managers because there's been uh, challenges across North Carolina. Cleveland County has led the state at the county level with this implementation in terms of the timeliness of, of, of uh, processing applications. And, and, and Ms. Nelson's request for three additional income maintenance case workers when looking across the state is, is very modest compared to other counties. And I would, I would ask for your uh, careful consideration of that. And finally, in this budget, we've got additional school resource officer presence. This is full funding for the full year. This is a partnership with the school system, and this will allow Sheriff Norman to assist our school system with an SRO presence in our elementary schools. Our next focus here is community education and customer service. Several things I bring to your attention tonight that's loaded in the recommended budget. First, we have $25,000 that's allocated for countywide recycling campaign that was successfully kicked off and will continue throughout the year. And this is aimed at reducing our waste stream and, and, and prolonging the life of our landfill. So this is this is good stuff for Cleveland County in, in part in, as far as our physical and environmental sustainability. Also in our shelter, rescue, adoption, and education uh, facility, we talked about the upgrades to the, to the facility, the staffing increases, the outreach, and we've got $13,000 that's, that's dedicated next year in, in public outreach and marketing to make our to continue to make our public aware what opportunities there are uh, with our shelter rescue. Uh, also in our customer service area, our library uh, here in Cleveland County is very busy. It serves uh, members of the public on a day-to-day -day basis. We've got a vibrant computer system at the library, and uh, we've got loaded into the budget for your consideration, $30,000 for computer replacements next year in 
our library system. Our general public is on these computers uh, at times from the time we open and time, until the time we close. And it's a great service to our community and uh, to have a system that is upgraded, that is responsive, and that the, the public can use. Finally, in our building inspections department, uh, we would recommend that you consider allowing us to put field computers into all of our vehicles for our inspectors uh, at, at a price of $10,000. This does several things. It allows our inspectors to not only complete the inspection in the field, but to enter it in the field. It would then uh, transmit it back to the home office here without the inspector having to come in. And then most importantly, our customers would be able to log in in the field, track the inspection, and actually download and see what the inspector's comments were while they were at the site. So it's a customer friendly, uh, high level of responsiveness uh, in that department, as well as the staff savings and efficiency of the campus. Fiscal sustainability, that's also one of the commissioner's goals. The commissioner, before I came on board, talked about uh, the creation of a dedicated grants writer. And through a partnership with the community college, I raised for you this evening uh, dedicated funding earmarked for a grants writer that would be administratively housed at the community college with the grants administration area over there. We would, out of the manager's office, share administrative responsibility along with the departments, and we would hope over the next year to load that position up on the local initiatives and ask that person to find non-local grant money uh, that, could be, that could be brought back to Cleveland County for our initiatives. Finally, I mentioned that we have a reduction in unrestricted fund balance of $300,000, and I'm happy to report that as of July the 1st, uh, if the budget is passed as recommended, you will see your, your fund balance tip over at 16% for the first time in quite some time. Several operation and staffing increases that I'll raise your attention. I mentioned earlier tonight a 2% cola for all county employees, employer health insurance increase that is at 18%. As I mentioned earlier, we do have an expansion of a, a wellness initiative that I hope. Uh, uh, over the next year, we will see our increases on our employer health care curve and actually go in the other direction. So we have the introduction of a disease management program for the coming year. We have expanded health wellness coaching. We have a corporate YMCA membership package for our employees at a reduced rate. And then finally, we are offering smoking cessation through an expanded relationship with our local pharmacy at our health department. All of this is at aim at uh, helping our employees to better manage their wellness. Finally, I have uh, for your consideration five additional full-time employees. This would uh, include bringing on board a line-level uh, staff attorney that would be working full-time uh, for the county and the county manager's office. A detention center maintenance employee that would be uh, in the sheriff's office, but that would be working at the jail annex. This employee would be brought on board we bring all the, all of the laundry that is currently outsourced. The laundry would now be insourced, as well as the cleaning of the jail annex and operational savings of uh, somewhere over $40,000 a year uh, if we insource these functions. We have solid waste mechanic that's in the budget uh, that is operating at the landfill, which is our enterprise fund. This solid waste mechanic does give assistance with all county uh, vehicles by uh, doing inspections for us, which does provide savings to our general fund. And then finally, two positions in our health department, both of which are at the Carolina Access Program, which is uh, the federal program uh, currently managed through the public health department. That includes a nurse and a pharmacy tech. I'll close tonight by mentioning several capital projects that I think tie well with the theme that the commissioners have continued to push uh, with your focus areas and our community partnerships. First is our, air, our successful airport partnership with the city of Shelby. It oftentimes goes unnoticed, but we do have a beautiful airport out on the western end of uh, Shelby. And I'm pleased to report that I've got $50,000 in our capital budget next year for uh, infrastructure improvements that include expansion of the hangar and security enhancements out at the airport. I've got public safety radio maintenance equipment that I've loaded into the budget. This is a diagnostic level uh, of, of equipment where uh, our electronic maintenance staff, very small staff, supports over 800 radios in the field uh, uh, that not just include Cleveland County, but also some of our volunteer fire departments and rescue units. And 
And this equipment will allow our folks to better manage those radios to ensure that they're functional and safe and that we have an uninterrupted level of service in the field. Finally, I have $250,000 uh, earmarked le next year to strategically move our district attorney's office to the building most closely adjacent to the law enforcement center. It's a strategy to prolong our life of our law enforcement center and also to not in any way uh, uh, diminish the services that our citizens receive when they are in our court system. And so the $250,000 will upfit the maintenance building that's directly across the street from the, the, the county administration building. And then our district attorney's office will relocate there. But as you well know, that's within probably no more than 100 yards uh, of, of the middle of the courthouse where our, our DA's office will be able to go back and forth and serve the courts if necessary. That will create uh, the maintenance staff having to move from the maintenance building, and I believe $50,000 worth of uh, building improvements to the Hunter School, which is a part of the Patton Drive property. It's a school property, but I'm, I'm in contract negotiations with the schools, and I think we will be coming to pursue uh, looking at a contract that would allow us to take that property over to bring the Hunter School online uh, for county maintenance, and for necessary county storage. And then finally, Boyle Springs, as you know, earlier this year, Boyle Springs Rescue uh, uh, closed its operation. The county accepted that EMS base station over in Boyle Springs. And I have actually been in the process of, uh, with board's uh, recommendation to move $53,000 to upfit that building in Boyle Springs and get our EMS uh, uh, Boyle Springs medics into that renovated building. And what that will do, boys, is that will keep us from having to look for property acquisition and building a new building in the next five to seven year time frame, which we otherwise would have to do. I feel like I've moved fast, uh, but probably it's not fast enough uh, for you. I'm happy to move it over back to the board and answer any questions that you've got. Certainly our staff is here to have technical questions about services or anything that's within the budget. Mr. Chair, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank 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 you. Uh, the, the Human Resources Department, myself, and we went through several months along with uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, who is our third party administrator uh, and our consultant. And we sat down and we tried to identify, we tried to identify a multi-pronged strategy to roll out to our employees. These, these, in, these increases for next year will be more vital employers. That's my recommendation to you. And looking at our current health care plan, my, my opinion, and the key opinion is we've got to make our health care affordable for our employees, and we've got to remove impediments so that employees can remain healthy. And so that will be on the back of the employer next year. Any other questions or comments at this time? Item on the agenda is NATO voting delegate and alternate. And if I understand correctly, Commissioner Hawkins and Mr. Hutchins are the ones that are going. So we'll I make a motion that we elect Commissioner Hawkins to be the voting delegate. We've got Commissioner, I've got a motion for Commissioner Hawkins to be the voting delegate. Is there a second? I'll second that. I've got a second. Any other discussion? What about the chiefs and officers? Well, that would be the I'll pass on the commission of action. Let's go ahead and make that. Can we make a motion? Well, let's see. Are you making yeah, I, I will amend my amend motion. Amend your motion. Yeah. Okay. Commissioner Hawkins will be the voting delegate, and Commissioner Hutchins will be the alternate. All right. We've got a first and a second. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Mr. Forbes. Mr. Hawkins, Mr. Hawkins. 
for it. We had our relay for life celebration on uh, Friday night. It was the Cleveland County and Shelby relay for life, the 20th anniversary, and it went very well. Had a great turnout and great entertainment music, teams working hard, raising money for cancer research. We had five or more have a little blip like the Mercy Me con concert. The wind came barreling through there right when everyone was setting up. And it was just like a Deja vu to me when I was out there the night that did it for me and oh my goodness, everybody's stuff started flying everywhere. Kids were going everywhere and it lasted probably about six minutes. And uh, it was very nice. So, and uh, we appreciate the participation of our sheriff back here in the dungeon booth. Uh, we announced the sheriff was in there and everybody bombarded him. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. But, but thank you very much for uh, participating in that. Absolutely. And uh, we also had an announcement today of uh, the new superintendent of our school board. And I appreciate the support of the community. Uh, he's got a lot of challenges and a lot of work in front of him. And um, work was hard. He's done hard. I know what it's like to um, search for someone to replace someone. And uh, we need to give him the support that he needs in this community to have continue with the work. Quite busy for the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, Sam and I went to Lamar. Uh, we just started taking support the Black Hill Main Court of Sand. I gave you an update at him. We had his wife seeing prayer breakfast at National Tourism Day. We had uh, graduation at the uh, community college. We had the uh, board meeting and different things. And uh, I fortunate that Grace Christian Academy invited me to. Check-ins, check-outs, so the public will see the benefit of that. 
and there will be a second year of the grant, but this year, which is all the, the basics of the grant, we were awarded $90,000. That's great. Thanks for all the hard work on that, too. That's, they're going to be, you're going to be able to go into the library, get a stack of books, take it by the counter, you just and walk out. That's right. They don't have to check these things, and have a chip in each one of them, or a lot chip in there. So that's, I think it's a good thing. And uh, I also I would well like to, to uh, congratulate our county manager uh, for his budget for, for the county, um, along with our department heads. Um, I know you all have been really um, instrumental as far as working on our budget this year. We appreciate all the input. Thanks, Mo. Thank you, Herman. Set all the